Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today is an overcast day in spring in Vancouver. Here I am on the SkyTrain to Main Street Station. And I love these colorful murals and freighter trains. And another really cool mural on the bridge between Commercial Drive and Main Street. Beautiful mountains and clouds in the distance. Here I'm, I'm arriving at Main Street Science World Station. And it's about 10 minutes walk to the edge of Chinatown. Here I am on the corner of Gore Avenue and Union Street. And here I am sitting down outside Honey Bee Cafe. So I ordered black tea in a really cute setup. And here are my pancakes with blueberry jam and cream. All right, so before eating and drinking, I'm going to quickly sketch my pancakes and this little jug of syrup on the edge of the plate the body shape of the mini pitcher and the handle. Yep, so it's a little metallic mini pitcher and the, uh, the rim, the syrup in there, finishing the outline of the ceramic dish. Now I'm starting to draw the organic outline of the, uh, the biggest pancake on the bottom. There are actually two thick and fluffy pancakes. And here is the one on top, a little smaller than the one on the bottom. Again, really paying attention to what I see in front of me and not drawing from preconceptions. Every single pancake has a unique contour or outline. And the crispy edges. Starting to give the pancake top a bit of texture using very gentle hand pressure and loose squiggly lines and then drawing this little pile of blueberry jam, um, the little cute pieces of blueberries, and um, the bit of uh, whipped cream here on top in a fluffy shape, and keep adding more texture for the blueberry jam. Little blueberries pop up from the syrup. Some accentuation between the two pancakes. Just drawing this uh, green border around the rim of the dish. Adding some more organic textures for the pancake on the bottom. Um, a bit accentuation on the bottom with thicker line there. Now just wetting the area with clear water. I know as you can see the ink is smudging because um, I'm adding watercolors too soon. But that's okay. The smudging black ink diluted into gray. It's adding a really organic look for the yellow that I'm putting on. Now wet onto wet, a um, bit of orange for some um, gradients happening on the surface of the pancakes. So again, the smudging black ink is actually good. It's adding a really nice sense of organic feel for these two pancakes. And also now I'm wet onto wet blending on a bit of burnt sienna for some darker tones, uh, the burning marks on the surface of the pancakes. Now I'm quickly laying on a first layer of uh, royal purple or violet for the uh, blueberry jam. As you can see, I'm skipping around and leaving some white spots to show the highlights of the, uh, the shining syrup. Second layer, very quickly, um, it's a darker violet with blue mixed into the royal purple. Again, skipping around the white spots to preserve the bright highlights. And after the pancake areas are dried, I want to add even more contrast. This is kind of like wet on dry, putting on even more burnt sienna. So this time the burnt sienna is not fading out as before because the previous layer is dried very much and using leftover gray in my palette just to add a bit of shade for the little puff of whipped cream. Okay, so now I need to stop painting and enjoy my pancakes before they get too cold. After eating, I'm painting the, um, the brim area of the dish using thin brush strokes of green. This is like a mix of lime green and a little bit radiant green. I love this vintage color. And now I need to move on to another less shaky table close to the corner of the street and also sketched my uh, cup of tea and the little tea jug. Okay, so I moved to another table so I could see these colorful houses better from this spot. 
Now I'm ready to sketch. So I just drew a rectangular frame about my food and drink. Taking about a minute or two to ponder about the composition, starting with the first triangular shape of the little roof. For this little house, a little on the left side of the corner and connecting the next rooftop shape with it. These two are very much the same shape, but the one on its right is a little bit bigger because it's closer to me. Now I'm adding this uh, traffic sign overlapping in front of these two houses. And then this tree, I think is sprouting with fresh new leaves. So when I start drawing a tree, I like to start with the trunk area and the, uh, the sweeping lines of the branches on the left and right side of the trunk in organic symmetry and adding some more details for the upper floor of this house, including the windows. So the windows, as I always feel, they're like eyes of houses. Now trying to figure out the sidewalk line on the bottom. And then going back to this part, adding another overlapping street sign there. And another little tree is blooming with nice little flowers. As you can see, when I'm doing urban sketching, I like to draw the things in front, in the front first. Uh, here are two shrubs covering the bottom of the two houses here. After that, I'm drawing the eave and the, uh, the door area on the bottom of this house behind the shrubs and the fence and another section of fence towards the left and drawing the next house on the left and the next one. They're getting smaller and shorter as well because of perspective, adding another tree Again, starting with the trunk and the major branches and the little twigs, adding a car parked on the side of the street, keeping the shape really simple and cute. And just adding some more essential little details for the car and coming back to add more branches and twigs for this tree here. And then more house details behind it. A lot of vague little shapes and lines to define windows, and the uh, wooden planks, roof details. Yeah, so just keep all the details behind the tree really blurry because it's actually really hard to see. There's no need to make those lines behind so clear. Okay, now it's time to come back to the middle bottom part of the sketch to draw some more shapes in various organic spherical shapes and this little tree that's really cute in the middle. Some quick textures for the shrubs. And now drawing this slanting line, this is the bending corner. And now these houses are actually going down, as you can see from the rooftops, these roofs are going slightly down towards the right. Well, the rooftops on the left are all going slightly down towards the left. So there are two vanishing points in this urban scenery. And now I just drew another window and um, some greeneries surrounding it. And another window and color the uh, glass panels with solid black ink so they look more prominent on the house. Some more on the uh, ground level of this house. And now I'm starting to add the details for the houses on the right hand side of the median line. So these houses on the right of the median line, um, the directions of those little rooftops are going down towards the right, um, starting with the upper half. And um, yeah, these lines on the bottom, for example, the side of the uh, sidewalk, they're going up towards the right because my eye level is somewhere in the middle, in between the first floor and the second floor. So for the right side, all of those horizontal lines above my eye level and the details are all going down towards the right. And these uh, details, including the height of the fence over here, below my eye level, they're all going upwards towards the right. And now just quickly drawing this little tree inside the yard and the little new leaves hanging on the branches. 
All right, so that's enough details for the little tree. Now I'm going back to add more windows for these houses. So as you can see, these windows above my eye level and these little eaves, they're all sinking down towards the right because these areas are above my eye level. And quickly drawing some more shrubs, bushes, and little trees. And most of the front porch areas of these houses are being obstructed by the trees and bushes. So just keep those areas really loosely drawn. And stairs, as you can see right there. Now drawing the, um, the sidewalk and the thickness of it. And adding these short sections to suggest um, even more three dimension for the sidewalk. Now going back to the roofs to add a bit of texture was very simple, uh, little broken lines. And that's very much it for the drawing part. Final bits of details, that's it for the drawing. Here's the look of my finished drawing. It took me about um, 25 minutes or so to draw. And the sky is looking better than before. I love these little puffy clouds above the houses. Now it's time to paint watercolors. So I'll be using two water brushes. Both are Holbein brand. When painting a landscape or cityscape, I always like to start with the sky first. So I just wetted the sky with clear water. Um, putting on a super diluted um, yellow to suggest the placement of those little puffy clouds. And grabbing some cerulean blue and um, paint this negative space surrounding the clouds very loosely. And some more, just spreading this blue, nice and loose. So painting a little cloudy sky with watercolors, you kind of have to envision where the placements of the white clouds are and use the cerulean blue to wrap around those shapes that you envision. Yeah, just adding a bit more stronger cerulean blue. So the sky today is a pretty mild cerulean blue, so I'm keeping this color pretty diluted. All right, so now I should go back to the drawing part to add these wooden planks on the exteriors of these houses, just for more details. I think I forgot. And it's not too late to add these details with pen. Now coming back to watercolors again. Just wetting the street area and the sidewalk with clear water just so it's easier for the paint to spread around. Grabbing some leftover yellow ochre, dilute it with water so it's a really mellow yellow. It shows the sunshine being reflected onto these concrete colors. And pretty much for everything, this is kind of like the underpainting for all objects under a sunny sky. They all contain a bit of luminosity from the sunshine. And so I'm just grabbing some lime green, mix it with a little bit of viridian green to paint the lawn area in between the sidewalk and the houses. And using very little brush strokes to paint um, the fresh new leaves hanging on these little trees. And some more over here, following what I see. So this is the lightest green town that I see in this um, urban scenery. Playing with uh, different ratios of lime green mixed with viridian green. So here this one contains a higher ratio of viridian green for these shrubs compared to those um, young leaves on the trees. And yeah, so that one, the, the hanging climbing ivy, contains basically very much just viridian green. Now I'm starting to paint the exteriors of these houses. This one is a pretty vibrant cadmium yellow color. And um, royal purple mixed with a little bit of magenta for this house here. And not forgetting the little bits for the first floor. And um, yeah, now I need to clean my brush on the towel and grab a more artificial dark shade of green to paint that house on the far left. This one is kind of like a peacock green or something. 
um, it's pretty artificial. So if you look very deeply, you're going to notice that these exterior, the paint colors of the houses are actually pretty artificial compared to the organic greens of the trees and bushes. This one is more of a turquoise blue, turquoise green for this house in the middle. And grabbing some more pink purple containing less water compared to the first layer for some stronger tones for this house and this house on the far right side. There are also these little gaps behind the trees and bushes to be filled and I'm keeping those colors pretty diluted because it's actually barely visible. Yeah, same for the blues and the red purples here. Yeah, keep the color really foggy so it's not competing or coming forward in front of the trees. Now I just grab a little, little bit of burnt sienna to paint these rooftops. And I'm keeping this brown, the color of the rooftops, a pretty diluted burnt sienna because it's a sunny day. The brown is not intense. It's a little bit kind of washed out, very close to the sky, to the sun. And now I'm trying to paint a shade of green for these bushes using verdant green, mixing with a little bit burnt sienna. So as you can see, when we're painting watercolors, it's always a great idea to start with the lightest tone. For example, for these bushes, yellow green. And then now I'm putting on this mid to dark green, mostly consists of verdant green and a little bit burnt sienna mix in for the mid-tones and the shade tones of these shrubs and bushes. Using leftover burnt sienna and very thin brush strokes to paint these trees. And grabbing some um, purple, actually diluted with a lot of water to paint the fuzzy canopy area of that little tree and leftover yellow green using very tiny little brush strokes and quick dashing movement to paint these young leaves. So on a sunny day, the yellow greens could look even more saturated um, compared to on a cloudy or an overcast day. Yeah, so just express ourselves and you can use pretty vibrant colors to show the energy, the power of spring. And when we're painting, when we're using colors, we don't have to be exactly the same as, as it looks like in real life. We could always exaggerate the colors by spice up the saturations. And as you can see, I'm keeping the drawing and also the painting, the color tones on the very left side, uh, really gentle. Uh, in the fade out style because when we're sketching and painting we don't have to make every single area so strong. My focus is actually the corner area of this streetscape. And I'm um, using blue to mix with the leftover purple for a kind of uh, muted violet for the little light shadows on the sidewalk and the street and another layer of more intense gray for the stronger shadows coming from the trees and bushes. And also for the thickness area of the sidewalk is shaded. And grabbing a stronger tone of green containing radiant green and higher ratio of burnt sienna to paint these lawn areas, the cast shadow from the shrubs or bushes. And yeah, putting on some uh, retouches of blue underneath the eaves and for some part of the blue house areas for a bit of color transition and contrast. And yeah, so grabbing some more turquoise green for that area underneath the eave. A bit of shade for the yellow house there. So overall, this painting has a pretty nice balance of warm and cold colors. So the warm colors are the vibrant yellow greens, the red houses, and also the warm brown of the rooftops. The cold colors are the sky, um, the blue exterior of the houses, and also this blue car here. Some stronger shades around the sidewalk area. 
with another layer of more concentrated gray containing less water. And grabbing some cerulean blue, this time containing less water compared to the first layer. Just want to make the sky look a little stronger. And that's very much it for today's tutorial video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I try to update my channel with two, two videos every week. See you soon next time. Have a great day everyone.